Good evening, Friendship United Methodist Church family. God bless you on this Lord's Day. Thank you for joining us for Bible study. Praise God. Visitors and friends, we thank you for taking this time out of your busy day to join us for Bible study. Uh, let us give God some praise. Heavenly Father, we praise you right now, God. Oh, God, we lift up your name. We lift you up, oh, God, because you are God alone. You are creator. You are the maker. You are the keeper, oh, God. You provide for us. You give us provision. And we praise you right now. Come on, say, lift those hands up and say, Lord, I desire you. I deserve you, God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, the Lord has done us a favor. God woke us up this morning. He took us out uh, uh, running errands, and he brought us back home. And praise God, some of us are on the way home. And God is just so good, saints of God. He watched over you all the day long. Amen, somebody. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, we come, Lord, to say thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your extended grace. Oh, God, thank you for extending us for another day in this life. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. You didn't have to, but you did, God. And, oh, Lord, we thank you for those who are listening and hearing this evening. I pray, God, that something will be said that will... Uh, 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 encourage us to self-check ourselves. Oh, God, this is the beginning of a uh, uh, Lent season. Oh, God, a time for repentance. And, oh, God, I pray that your people will receive the word tonight. I pray, God, that this word will be passed on to others, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, we are living in perilous times, oh, God. We are living in uncertain time, God. Now, God, we come to say thank you, Lord. We come, God. I pray you, 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 you give me words and give me wisdom and give me script, scriptures, oh God, that your people will feed on, oh God, in this life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Come on, say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we love you, we love you, we love you, Lord, we love you. Hallelujah. Saints of God, just want to invite all of you to join us for Sunday school. Uh, the adult Sunday school will be held this Sunday morning, praise God, at 10 a.m. And saints of God, I tell people all the time, it's time now to get back in that sanctuary. It's time now to bury fear and let us come on back to the Lord's house. Amen. God is waiting on us. Praise God. Praise God. So you spread the word. Uh, tell your friends, uh, come on back to the sanctuary. If they don't have a home church, invite them to come worship with us. Praise God. God is doing mighty and great things in the lives of the believers. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, also, uh, praise God, let us continue to pray one for another. Pray for the sick and shed ins. Uh, praise God, not only in the sanctuary, not only in the church, not only in our community, but let us pray for the sick all over the world, saints of God. A special prayer for 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 the war that is going on now uh, uh, over in the, uh, Ukraine and uh, between Ukraine and, and Russia. Let us pray, saints of God. Saints of God, don't you know that could have happened right here? We are so blessed. We are thankful that God is keeping us. Glory, hallelujah. Now, saints, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to Psalm 51. This is a very appropriate passage of Scripture for this Lent season. Praise God. 
Psalm 51, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And saints of God, I'm going to lift up verses 10 through the 13th verses. Psalm 51, verses 10 through the 13th verse. Amen. Praise God. And if you will, before we go there, let me read verse 5. Mm -hmm. Before we go there, verse 5 says, I'm reading from the revised King James Virgin. This is David speaking. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Praise the Lord. Now that's David. Now, let us look at verses, uh, let me read for your hearing, verse 10 through 13. Hear what David says. Creating me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, my God, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. The 12th verse Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your righteous, generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Amen, 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 amen. Saints, I want to use for a, a subject tonight, a topic. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. And saints of God, I pray that you will, you have your Bibles, and I want you to follow along because we are going to explain, exegete these scriptures, and I'm going to refer to some other passages as well. Thank God for Lent. You know, saints of God, so many people, family members, loved ones who were with us uh, last season this time, they are no longer with us. Amen. They have passed on. But saints of God, we are here. We are blessed. We are highly favored in the name of Jesus. And saints of God, it is obvious that we all were born in sin. You have heard Pastor James mention this. I've taught on it for many months. Yes, we all were born in sin. David just said it. We all were born in sin. Now hear this. Praise God. If we were born in sin, we know sin. We know how to sin. But God wants to transform us. God wants to transition us, to transform. He wants to save us. God wants us to repent. Now just think about it, saints of God. If someone hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, guess what? They are still in sin. They are still living in sin. Just ponder that for a few moments. Think about that. If you have never come to the realization and say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Please, Lord, forgive me. I confess my sins to you, Lord. Forgive me. Saints of God, if you haven't done that yet, if you haven't asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, saints of God, sadly to say, you still may be a sinner. I'm not calling you a sinner. No, 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 no. Please, don't take this the wrong way. Amen. Lent is a time to repent, praise God. In the Christian church, it is a period of uh, 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 fasting, praying, restoration, uh, 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 being transformed, uh, 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 transparent, and God wants us to change. Hallelujah. He wants us to change. Lent began uh, as Wednesday. Uh, it lasted six and a half weeks. Uh, up 
leading up to Easter. Praise God. It's 40 days of fasting. Uh, Sundays are excluded. We do not include Sundays. In imitation of Jesus Christ's fasting in the wilderness before he began his earthly ministry. So that's where the 40 days came from. Praise God. Psalm 51 is associated with one of the hardest experiences of David's life. The aftermath of his affair with Bathsheba, you know the story. This is one of the several psalms of David in which led him to repentance and led him to record this psalm. And this psalm is entitled, uh, A Prayer of Repentance. A Prayer of Repentance. Amen. Praise God. And say to God, if you will, I'm going to lift up verses 10 and 13. The focus is certainly on us tonight because David is no longer with us. Amen. Even though he wrote this, this, this psalm, but he is no longer here in the flesh. He's no longer physical. So this word is meant for you and I. Praise God because we are still here. Hallelujah. So God is speaking to us. Matter of fact, David wrote it for us. The 10th verse, Psalm 51, verse 10, hear what this says the Lord. David says, creating me a clean heart, O Lord. Now, David knew all of his sins. He knew the wrong he, uh, he did. He, 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 he did some wrong. I won't get into details, but he had a man killed, Uriah killed, just to be with his wife. Uh, David had an affair with uh, Bathsheba, and he did other things as well. But he said, now, it's time for me to change. It's time for me to, 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 to get on the Lord's side. Praise God. He says, create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Now, hear what he says. Praise God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Within. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints of God, only God can do that. Man cannot change you on the inside. No, 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 no. Only God can, can do that transformation. Praise God. Man can pray for your flesh. Yes, he can help you uh, um, just by counseling with you or uh, uh, I can help you by preaching the word. Yes, I can preach the word to you every Sunday, but I cannot transform you. I cannot um, um, uh, um, save your soul. I can lead you to repentance. I can lead you to accept Christ, but I cannot change you. Amen. Verse 11. Do not cast me away from your presence. Now, this is David. Do not cast me away from your presence. Now, saints of God, listen, <laughs> not one of us want God to cast us away. You know, if God were to cast you away, saints of God, you would be on your very own. You would be totally under the umbrella of Satan, the world. If God were to remove his hands from us, saints of God, we would have some downfalls. Amen, amen, amen. And he goes on to say, praise God. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Now he said, do not leave me out of your presence. And then now he says, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me, God. Listen, God's Spirit is holy. Praise God. Any other spirit is not real. Any other spirit is misleading. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. That's why Christ came. And that's why he left. He sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us, to show us the way. So here he said, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12. 
Look what David says. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. He says the joy of your salvation. The joy of God's salvation for us. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Uphold me with your generous spirit. My God, my God. Oh God, listen. God's hands holds us. God keeps us. He protects us. Oh, glory, hallelujah. The 13th verse says, thank you, Jesus. Then I, now this is David, then I will teach transgressors your ways. In other words, David now is willing to turn around. Once the Lord saved him, he's willing now to turn around and teach uh, sinners God's way. He's going to share with them what the Lord did for him. I messed up. I did this. God saved me. So now I'm going to teach you God's way. And he says here in the last uh, 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 sentence, And sinners shall be converted to you. Now listen, David cannot convert anyone. I can't convert anyone. All I can do is preach God's word. God's word will convict us, convince us, and convert us. Amen, somebody. And you know, saints of God, we all have family members. Oh, God, we've been praying for them for years. Oh, God, I pray my son will, 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 will get saved. I pray my daughter will, will, will stop living the lifestyle. Listen, we can't change them. All we can do is preach and teach to them. Amen? And maybe one day... Amen. One day, praise God, they will hear the word. Hallelujah, somebody. Let the church say amen. And you know now, again, we all were born in sin. Amen. We were born in sin. Our nature is sinful. You know, that word nature simply means the way something function. Amen? So we were born with the sinful nature. We, we, that's why we operate in the sinful arena. We are sinful. Or should I say we were sinners, but now God has saved us. And we thank God for saving us. But there were family members, co-workers, and friends who have not accepted Jesus Christ. David said, I was born, I was born in sin. And, and saints of God, if you haven't been born again, we are still in sin. That's why we do what we do. But this is the season, Lent season now, praise God, to self-examine yourself. Every year, saints of God, every month, every week, every day, every, every, every hour, we should self-examine ourselves to see if we are truly a Christian, a child of God. And when you see 14 church every Sunday praising the Lord, and they got a different attitude on Monday, something is wrong. Can I get a witness, somebody? When, listen, when God changes your heart, your heart will be changed. Oh, that's a good word right there. And, and you know, saints of God, I want to uh, show you a few scriptures tonight. These are uh, some very powerful passages of scriptures. If you will, you're going to enjoy these. Self-examine yourself. It's time to, to, to repent. It's time for God to create in us a new heart. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Psalm 26. This is a beautiful passage. I ran across it today. Psalm 26. Mm -hmm. Psalm 26. And let us look at verses 1 and 2. Yes. Psalm 26. And I want you to write these down. Uh, these passages talk about uh, 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 examining yourself, your heart, to see if you are really a, a, a child of God, a born-again Christian. Psalm 26, verses 1 and 2. Hear this. Again, this is David. But God is speaking to us. Vindicate me, O Lord, <laughs> for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip 
My God, my God. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. Verse 2, David says, Examine me, Lord. Examine my heart, O oh Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Saints of God, what David is saying, he wants the Lord to vindicate him because he feels that he is uh, he's on the right path. And he wants the Lord to, to test him. Glory, hallelujah. Saints of God, self-examine yourself. Visitors and friends, self-examine yourself. Ask yourself, am I who I say I am? Am I a true child of God? Let's go to Psalm 139. Psalm 139. This is another great passage. Hear what it says. Thank you, Jesus. And let us look at, praise God, Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. And please make sure you write these passages down, saints, and read them sometime because it will remind you that we all need to self-examine ourselves. Let us look at Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, this is David again. See, listen. <laughs> David was a mess. But God saved him and made him a king. Now, you know, nobody can do that but God. Hear this. Verses 23 and 24. David says, search me. Saints of God, we ought to say, God, search my heart right now, Lord. Search me, Lord. Oh, God, and know my heart, Lord. Try me, God, and know my anxieties. Verse 24. And see if there is any wicked way in me. Oh, glory, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. And lead me in the way everlasting. Saints of God, that's, this is a very powerful passage of Scripture. You know what that tells me? We need to self-examine ourselves. We need to even ask God, Lord, search my heart. If you find anything within me, God, that is not of you, remove it. If there's anything in your heart that you know that is against God, anything that you know God is displeased with, ask Him to take it away during this Lent season. Come Easter Sunday morning and call it the Resurrection Sunday. Saints of God, all these bad habits will be resurrected. Oh, God, listen, they're going to die, but the new you will be resurrected. Hello, somebody. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God, my God, David says, search me. And let me give you another passage. Let's go to, uh, that's going to be uh, 2 Corinthians in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And saints of God, get in the habit of reading the word. I promise you, God's word will keep you. God's world, word will protect. It will bless your life. That's a promise. Saints of God, this is a promise. See, if the word of God is not in you, saints of God, we have a problem. But if God's word in your soul, it helps us to navigate in this sinful world. I've known some folks don't even have to go to a doctor. Christians, believers, because God is keeping them. But they go for their annual checkup. Yes. What I say, first Corinthians, second Corinthians, second Corinthians, chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, and let us look at verses 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. We've got some, <laughs> well, let's start with self. We need to examine ourselves. 
We've got some family members, husband need to ex examine themselves, wives need to examine herself, our sons need to examine himself, our daughters, our grands need to examine themselves, our co-workers, our neighbors need to examine themselves. Folks confessing to be saved, but we need to examine ourselves. Hear what the word says, verses uh, 5 and 6. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. <laughs> I love it, saints of God. I love it. Oh, God. To find out whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves? My God, my God. Do you not know yourselves? That Jesus Christ is in you, believers. Believers, saved folks, I'm talking to you right now. Christians, Christ is in you. Examine yourself. Christ is in you. Hear what it says. Unless, indeed, you are disqualified. Getting back to folks who claim to be saved and they living one way on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday, they are a different person. Listen, they are already disqualified. Amen, somebody. Say to God, we need to really uh, self-examine ourselves. Verse 6. Hear what, it, what the writer says. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. In other words, saints of God, we're supposed to treat each other like Brothers and sisters in Christ, we're supposed to love one another. Then we will know that we are qualified for the kingdom of God. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. And don't you know, saints of God, your attitude toward God, toward others, means a lot. Will, t will certainly um, demonstrate to people that you are disqualified or qualified to be a Christian. Hello, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Tell somebody I'm qualified. And don't be ashamed. Tell somebody I am qualified to be a child of God. Hallelujah. Know who you are. Don't let no one take your, your, your God away from you. Don't let no one take your faith. Don't let Satan steal your salvation. I tell folks all the time, you know, love covers a multitude of sins. Matter of fact, I think it's written in several places in the Bible. Love will cover a multitude of sins. That's why God gave us the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. The second one is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love will take care of you. Listen, if you can love anyone... God can use you. If you love God, prove it. Demonstrate your love to God. And saints of God, as we as I close, we are certainly living in, oh God, I tell folks, we are living in the shadow of death. We are walking in the valley of the shadow of death. This COVID, a uh, 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 violence, a uh, 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 racism, Dissension, division, saints of God, we are living in the valley of the shadows of death. Young people have lost it. Some of them. Just the other night, one of my former members' son, I was told he got shot and killed. A 14-year-old. It's sad, saints of God. Parents, we're going to have to keep our children. We're going to have to... to to pray with them and, 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 and read the word to them and teach them God's way. Because each generation is getting worse and worse. Say to God, are you born again tonight? Yes. Has God created in you a clean heart? We know that we were born in sin. That's obvious. Oh, yes. Pastor James was born in sin. I was born in sin. Praise God, but thank God 
Oh God, thank God for Jesus Christ. And don't feel bad, saints of God. I don't want you, well, put it this way. I don't want you to beat yourself up if you haven't accepted Christ yet. But I do want you to feel guilty because when you find yourself, when you self-examine yourself and you, you know that you aren't where you should be, none of us are, but when you find yourself doing things against the will of God, um, hurting people, um, um, gossiping about folks, uh, dislike your neighbor, not speaking to folks, check yourself. Examine yourself. The word of God says he will come back for a church without a spot. Let me translate that for you. He is coming back for believers. Believers. Not those who are not perfect believers because there will be no perfect believers down here. But those who have a righteous heart, hear this, and have accepted the perfect spirit. God can use you. You see, God's spirit is perfect. Mm -hmm. Saints of God, you got uh, um, we got some days during this Lent season. I pray that you will certainly fast, pray, and be restored, repent, confess your sins. And you know, sometimes Satan, sin can get a grip on us. Yes, Lord, sin can get a grip on us. And you know, during this time, we are supposed to give up something. Somebody ought to give up smoking. Hello. Hello, somebody. Get those lungs functioning back the way God wants them to. Someone ought to give up drinking excessively. The reason I say it that way because the Bible doesn't tell us drinking is a sin. But if you overindulge in anything, it's a sin. Someone need to give up drinking excessively. We need to give up the, uh, uh, cussing and uh, misusing people, deceiving people. Saints of God, we need to give this up. We need to take up these old attitudes. Come on now. Some of us don't know how to talk to people. Some folks don't know how to communicate. We talk to folks any kind of way. Give it up, saints of God. Take it off. Praise God. Be restored. I always encourage folks to live like Jesus. Walk like Jesus. Talk like Jesus. Let your conversations be like Jesus. Can I get a witness, somebody? And I promise you, God will take care of you. Say to God, you may not need a doctor. God will take care of you. Let me say that again. If you live right, if you do the right thing, you may not need a doctor. You may go annually just to get your checkups, but you may not need surgery if you do what thus says the Lord, the Word of God. Saints of God, until next time, may God bless you. Pray much for me, and I will pray for you. And let us all uh, bow to uh, uh, a, a new life in Christ doing this Lynch season. And let me share this before I close. I think we got a few minutes. Every church I have pastored leading up to Easter, I've done a submerged baptism. <laughs> Praise God. You know, saints of God, some don't understand. Well, I understand that um, if you've been baptized once, you don't have to do it again. True. Because God did it the first time the right way. But if you don't remember your baptism, I'm in prayer about the saints of God. I may um, do a um, submerged baptism because it's a sign, oh God, hallelujah, that you've been washed clean. Pastor James is in prayer about this, and we will give you more information on this as we approach uh, Easter, Resurrection Sunday. Amen, amen, amen. Until next time, God bless you.